Hello everyone and thanks for joining me for this new video. Today I'm very happy to show you the new features introduced in Bricks Props and Oxyprops version 1.5. If you are a Bricks user, you don't want to miss this video because you will discover how to save a lot of time when using Bricks. If you are an Oxygen user, you already know and use part of these features, but I seriously improved them in this version and the improvements are coming soon to Oxygen. So let's jump into the editor and see how you will be much, much, much faster when laying out your page in your page builder. And most of it will take part on the right side of the screen because the new features focus on the structure tree of your document. So page builders are a bit like this. That's the case for bricks. That's the case for Oxygen. We have a structure tree on the right. We have elements and parameters on the left. And when building a page, we need to go back and forth between the structure tree and the elements panel. And because that's a pain, users customize their editor either with custom CSS or with external plugins to move the structure tree close to the elements panel or the other way and reduce those big moves with your mouse, especially if you have a very wide screen. Another issue we have is that I think, and I'm sure you also think that it's important to have the proper HTML tag assigned to our elements, to have the proper semantics, that's better for accessibility, that's better for SEO. And this is not easy with our page builder. If I insert a section and I want my section to be a header with the header HTML tag, I need to select my section, go to the content tab, then open the HTML tag dropdown and header is not available as a tag. So I need to go to custom and type my header tag. And now I will have a section container, but this time section in the bricks meaning of the section, but a header with the HTML semantic meaning of the header tag. And I take the example of a header, but for some specific elements, there are additional attributes and we will need to go to the style tab attributes and add the appropriate attribute. So there's a lot of non-value added movements and activities in this and there must be a better way. And that's probably also one of the reasons why page builder users like design set because they can go and pick from a library of pre-made elements. But then you have the opposite problem. You start from something completely finished, designed, and most of the time you have to modify it, change styles to match your own design. Okay, so how can we do things differently? Well, let's get rid of this section. With Bricks Props version 1.5 or with Oxyprops, if you are using Oxygen, you can right click on your blank structure panel and this opens the usual bricks context menu with these five new items. And if you hover these five new items, you see the familiar bricks props context panels, context menus. But this time, these menus will not control CSS properties or CSS utility classes, but they will allow you to inject elements directly inside your structure tree. So we have five items. The first one, bricks elements, gives you exactly the same elements with the same settings than you will find in the elements panel. But that's already an improvement if I want to add a section and inside my section, I want to add a heading and also a text. Well, everything happens inside of my structure tree, selecting directly the target container for my element. If I want to add another container to my section, I target the section and it's added to the section if I want to add to the container, I target the container and I add a new text. Okay. But these are the exact same elements than we would get with the element panel. Okay. So if we want to go further and actually use HTML tag, we will use the HTML elements panel. With the HTML elements, you will get access to the bricks elements, of course, but they will be preset with the proper HTML tags, the proper HTML attributes to match what is expected from the corresponding HTML element. So for example, if I add a section with a tag of header, well, I get a section and my section already has a custom tag with the tag of header. 
inside of my section, I want a container with no specific meaning attached to it. And inside of it, I want a heading and I want an H1. I select an H1 and I have directly an H1 with the proper tag and not the default A3 that I have to come and convert to an H1. If I want my heading with a subheading and that I want to use the HTML H group tag to group them together, that's very simple. I just have to go to my HTML elements and in my heading, I can see only H1 to H5 for now. That's because I have pre-selected the most often used HTML tags, but if you press V, the V key for view on your keyboard, you will extend the menu and get access to all the available tags and elements. And I can insert an H1 group. And my H1 group gives me an H group container with a H1 heading and a paragraph of text that is already assigned the sub H1 framework utility class. Okay, that's very simple with a single click. And now if below my heading I want a text, but I want a text with the proper tag of P, not a text inside of a div, I right click my bricks container and I will add a text level semantics P tag and I get a basic text, but with the tag of P. Okay, so I won't go into the details of all of the elements, but you have everything necessary to create sectioning parts in your document, grouping content, that's basically the bricks div elements with the proper tags and attributes to create article, a side header, main, etc. You will be able to create lists, an ordered list, ordered list with list items. Once again, if you want access to everything, you press V. And then you will have access to the description list. So we have discussed text level semantics with the P tag, certainly the most used, but you can add small text, strong text. You can add a span. You can add text link, code elements. And once again, you can expand to have access to all HTML tags. You have links preset as external links, internal links. These are text links, but you have the equivalent for containers, what you would find in Oxygen as link wrappers. You have embedded elements, picture, source, iframe, etc. Everything needed to create proper tables. I will create a specific video about creating a table. You will see how easy it is to create a table with a proper semantics in Bricks with the Bricks Props Structure Builder. And you also have everything needed to insert HTML form element, a form checkbox, all the inputs and the submit button. Okay, so that was for the HTML element. And these are individual elements, except for the H group, maybe, because you saw that by inserting an H group, I got an H1 and a paragraph of text. The other ones are indiv individual elements, and you still have to insert individual elements into your structure tree. But if you are like me, and I'm pretty sure like many developers, when creating your design, your structure, you have repetitive patterns, patterns that you use all the time. For example, you create a section and inside of this section, you add a heading, you add a description text. That's the header of your section. And under this header in your section, you add the section body. And sometimes you will use a flex column. Sometimes you will use a flex row. Sometimes you will use grids etc. And of course, you don't want each time to add each of these elements individually. So well, that's why I added this component panel. And this is the library to start with. Once again, you can press V to extend and access everything. And for example, when creating a section, so let's start by adding the container, the section by itself with the tag of section. And then I want a header to my section and I want something simple. I want a header left aligned. And this inserted a container, a bricks container with a tag of header for my section with an H group, with an H2 heading, because most of the time we want an H2 for the section with a subheading and with an introduction text for my section. And maybe this section will describe the features 
of my products, or maybe it will be a testimonial section, so I will add a body to my section. And these bodies are layouts, they have no content, but let's say, for example, that I want a grid three, a three columns grid, a responsive grid, as the body of my section. So this added a new container with a tag of div. This was a no, has no specific meaning, but it inserted the proper utility classes from the framework to create a responsive grid. It's a grid with three columns that will switch to two columns at the medium breakpoint and to one column at the small breakpoint. And there's also a preset gap to my grid of four. And we can see the layout of our grid with the bricks overlay. Okay, so you saw with simply two clicks, a first click to add my header left aligned, a second click to add my grid three, I have my blueprint structure for my section. Now inside of my grid, certainly I want to create a card. When you create a card, you add a container. It's a div, but for a card, most of the time, you will want to use a tag of article and then you add for a classic card an image a heading a text and maybe a link so once again i can right click go to my components and add a basic card and this will create the basic structure for my card i get a heading a picture a basic text and another basic text and from this i can duplicate my card to get my three columns. But of course, most of the time, you will not duplicate the card. You will use the query loop. And of course, this will work. You will get the basic card that you can configure with the query loop. If I want something more complex, well, I have other examples for now, not a lot, but for example, this kind of card. But we also can add this one or this one. And this will give you basic structures so you can work with. For example, this one has this kind of can burn effect animation. And this one is much more complex because it uses a lot of semantics. You will notice, for example, that this date here is using the time HTML tag. The updated date also uses the time element, which is the proper way to communicate a date time to the machine or the search engines. Because, for example, for humans, you will display that it was published 12 minutes ago. But for the search engine, you will give it a date time attribute with a value containing the time in the ISO format. And so very easily, in a few clicks, we got this blueprint structure that we can adjust to our needs. What else can we find? In my components, I will find the buttons. So let's get rid of this. Insert a new body. And this time I will use Flexbox and I will insert a flex column centered. And let's imagine I want to insert a call to action. Well, I will go to my components and, for example, insert a brand button. And the button is inserted with the proper classes. And of course, this allows you to create the structure, but most of the styling will be up to you. For example, you need to define by yourself the vertical spacing inside of your section, for example, by adding a gap of four. And I want also padding, so let's add a block padding of six. Okay, finally, in the components panel, you will also find complex layouts. So you will find the stack, the sidebars, the stack plus, plus the sidebar. Let's enlarge it, the stack, the sidebars, stack plus sidebar combine, and the holy grail. So for example, let's insert the holy grail component, and I get a full layout with a header a left column, a right column, a footer, and the main content already done for you. Finally, we have the patterns. Well, finally, that's not really finally because there's also the brick props element, but let's keep that for the end. 
in the patterns, you will find a growing library. You have a few ones to start with, but with full patterns for full section or even full websites. For example, if I want the minimal structure for a hero section, I will choose minimal and I get my structure with the containers, an age group, a text, my primary and secondary CTA and an image. You have the choice with a few different versions, for example, this one. Or this one. The idea is not to grow a huge library with hundreds of versions of the same design. We just want the basic structure. For example, if you have this section, you don't need me to decide that you want to invert the two columns and pick the right div to move it to the left. Okay, most design sets offer you five different variations of the same thing. That's absolutely not what I plan to do. But what I want to build with the plugin users is a library of useful patterns that will be the basic bricks, the basic components for us to build all the designs we need. And as I told you, we can even insert full website, for example, the portfolio website from a video I made a few times ago. Well, I just click on the button, it just takes a bit of time to bricks to load everything. But then I get the full website structure. And if we check our front end, well, you get the full site available for you, including this typewriter JavaScript. Then with this version, you get new custom elements. We have the menu bar, the menu burger, the menu button, and the FAQ. So of course you can insert the elements from the element panel like this. And all of these elements are based on design patterns from the WAI authoring practices guide, which is not a standard of course, but are recommended patterns for proper components accessibility. So let's get rid of this one, for example. And you can also access the, the elements with this menu. You will find the elements. For all of them, you will have a full demo of the component. So going back to the FAQ, for example, if I select the full demo, you get the element inserted in a section. And if we look at this uh, element, it uses the disclosure pattern from the authoring practices guide. And you can use keyboard navigation. The tab key allows you to navigate through the questions, the space or enter keys toggle the elements. Looking at the structure, this is a description list using the DL tag and then a series of DT for the question and DD HTML tags. Then we have the menu button. Here it is. So with the full demo, you have an explanation of uh, the accessibility features and the keyboard navigation. So for example, I'm using my keyboard, navigating to the element. Once on the element, by pressing the Enter key or the Space key, I open the drop down. The escape key closes the drop down. And then using my arrow keys up and down, I can move through the elements and select one of the elements by pressing the space or enter key. This will not be very visible in this example because all of the samples I are named items. But it also has a character navigation feature because if you press a key, any character, it will navigate to the closest item starting with this character. So if I press I, I navigate to the next, the closest next item.
starting with I. Of course, all of them start with I. I don't have a good <laughs> example right now. Okay, so that was the menu button. Let's have a look at the menu burger. And it is actually very similar. Here it is on the top right. Let's jump to the front end. So here is our burger. Once again, it's less useful for a burger menu because most of the time you use it on mobile, but it has keyboard navigation features. And if I open it, well, it opens my menu and I can close it with my escape key. Finally, the last and the more the most complex element is the menu bar. And if you are curious and have a look at uh, the pattern description, you will see that the menu bar may not be suitable for most site navigations. But if you have a very complex one, that's the pattern used for application navigations. So let's have a look at it. So once again, maybe I zoom a little and use my keyboard to navigate. So something you will notice is that when using the tab key, I use the tab key to access the full menu. But if I tab once again, I will exit the menu. So once I am focused on the menu, I use the arrow keys to navigate left and right. And when I'm on a drop down, I press the down key, for example. This opens the drop down, and then I can navigate my sub menu. And if there is another level, I can press the right key, and this will open the drop down, and I can navigate with up and down. If I continue pressing up, it will loop when I reach the top. And if in this position I press the left key, for example, this closes the drop down and brings me back to the parent one. And from this position, if I use the left key, I will go back to the top menu. And of course, all of this can be used with the mouse. And with a lot of nested different levels. One last thing before I leave you, because we have spent a lot of time on this side. Well, let's add a section with a flex column centered. I will make my section full height and centered. And inside of my container, I will add a basic text that I will enlarge so it's visible. OK, let's go to the content and let's insert a full paragraph. And once again, back to HTML tags and proper semantics. Sometimes you want to use the proper HTML tag and it's not easy. And I would say it's more easy with bricks than uh, with oxygen. Because at least Bricks allows you to type HTML tags directly here. For example, if I want to make this text strong, I can type my tags and then my text here is strong. But once again, that's typing. So now with Bricks props and with Oxyprops in Oxygen, you can select a portion of text, for example, this one. When releasing the mouse button, this opens this menu. Once again, you can press V to extend it, and you will have all the HTML tags that apply to inline text. So for example, we can make this text strong, and it is strong. We can select this dream, dream catcher here and mark it, which is the HTML equivalent of marking this word with an highlighter. I can make this one a superscript. 
and this one a subscript and I won't demonstrate all of them but for example we can finish with this one and make it a keyboard key so that's maybe not a feature you will use all day long but when you need it it's there for you and that's it for this overview of the new Bricks Props version 1.5 features for Bricks users. If you are not yet a Bricks Props user, maybe it's a good time to consider joining us. We still have a lifetime deal offer. If you haven't yet pressed the like button, subscribe to the channel. Tell me in the comments what you think of these new features. What kind of patterns or layouts would be the most useful for you so I can include them in the future versions. I wish you a good business, a lot of website builds, and I'll see you in the next video.